right, guys. Hey, it's uh, Ben Holiday. I'm uh, the owner of Sergeant Crush, Sergeant Crush Build. We've been working on it for um, about six years. It's a 2012 um, JK Rubicon. We, uh, when I bought it in 2012, uh, I had been holding out for a um, orange Jeep for a long time. And one day I'm surfing eBay. I think I was actually on vacation at my sister's place. And I saw this orange Jeep pop up on eBay and I'm like, I'm buying it. So I knew nothing about the JK. Um, I'd been out of, I'd been out of Jeeps for about, I don't know, four years, five years. Um, this is my fourth or fifth one. And uh, I said I wasn't buying another one until I could get an orange one. Um, we had a, we had a family at that time, so we started saying, yeah, we need a four door. Um, so I bought it sight unseen, never seen, uh, never talked to the company before. It was a dealer out of um, Colorado. So I worked with them, talked to the guys, and when I bought it, it was new, but it had a, it had a six inch lift. 37s, uh, Goodyear, MTRs, and some method wheels. So what we did is got that and I swore this is it. This is all I'm doing to this thing. Um, and you can see that I lied. So I um, wanted to start off by giving you a walk around of some of the stuff I've done. i am talk about some of the key people who have helped make this thing happen. Um, you know, I didn't really do anything to this thing until I moved to uh, Chattanooga in 2012. And you know, when I lived in, in South Georgia, I did all the work myself. Um, when I moved up here, family, job, life, it all got in the way, and I just don't have time. So um, I started looking around town for, for you know, who can, who can help me build this thing. And uh, the first place I saw when I was coming in Chattanooga was a big billboard on, uh, on the side of Interstate 75, and it said, Thomas 4x4. I was like, okay, let's go chat with Tom. No idea who the guy is. So I um, stopped in there one day, and... You know, I was running like a rough country lift. Um, I was running rough country dual stabilizers, you know, all that stuff. And, um, you know, I was just kind of the, the average entry Jeep just on, on 37s. So, talked to Tom, um, they did a couple things. You know, we tried to, we tried to make those Dana 44s work. We, we built up the front axle extensively, um, sleeves and gussets and um, steering and all that stuff. And, you know, it never felt stable and safe and all that so um, that's when things got a little crazy um, talked to Tom a lot and uh, and Tyler up there at Tom's 4x4 and they started talking about how can we actually fix this thing and, and make it what I wanted so you know that's when people started running 40s and people started doing all that so um, first thing we did was we ripped the axles out went with the Spicer Parts Ultimate Dana 60s uh, these have the uh, 538 gears um, you know, with a 3.6, that's that's just the right amount of, um, on 40s, it's, it's like the perfect gearing. Um, once we did that, you know, these the Spicer parts, I don't know how much you know about their axles, but um, they're basically bolt-in. Um, you take the old JK axle out, you put these in, um, there's nothing else you really need to do, except uh, you got to buy different wheels or you got to buy adapters, right, because these are eight lugs. Um, and you have to get different emergency brake lines, um, which, which I did for the rear. And what else? Oh, different drive shafts. Uh, you know, obviously these are our uh, 1350s that come with the, uh, with the spice part. So, the, the, you know, the yoke's just, just the bigger size. So, the first thing we did was axles. Um, and obviously when we changed out the wheels, we said we might as well change out the tires. So we put, the, uh, we put some 40-inch Nitto Trail Grapplers on there, which I love. Um, and that was kind of it. Same suspension, axles, tires, um, gave it a good stance. And then I still didn't like the steering. So I was like, we got to do something about that. And then I was like, I don't like my sway bar. My Rubicon sway bar started having issues. So we got rid of that as well. Um, went with the TerraFlex uh, dual rate, which is, is essentially, um, if you want to walk around here, I'll, I'll show you something cool about this sway bar. Is it, has, it has two torsion bars that, that cut across the front of the frame. Um, it's got, you know, call it street mode, call it trail mode. There's just a small wrench that you turn that. And when it's in street mode, it's not like an anti-rock where it's, it's, you have one torsion bar and that's all you get. You have the street bar and then you also have the trail bar that goes um, in it as well. So it gives you kind of the anti-rock feel, but it also gives you that factory, that factory steering. So that's why I went with that. It's a little more expensive than, than the anti-rock, but um, I, I did want this, the street stability um, as well. Um, I, run, I actually run an anti-rock in the, in the rear now, so um, obviously nothing against Curry. It's just, that's what I want with. Uh, on that, we didn't really do anything custom to it outside of paint the links. Um, I went with the longer links. Um, you know, it gives you a couple, a couple holes to get your torsion right. 
Um, mine is, is bigger, so it's obviously uh, in the last one. Also under here, um, again, I didn't like the steering, so we went with the Rock Solid Fab, um, one ton steering from, from um, Rock Solid Fab, obviously, in Tom's 4x4. So that's all aluminum. Uh, the only thing underneath here as far as linkage that's not alum aluminum is the front track bar. Uh, that was custom made by them. Uh, that's the only one of them in the world just because uh, with this Rebel Off-Road suspension kit, uh, Recon DSS kit we have, that's the only one we could get to work. Um, this is, I think, still the only Jeep running a Recon DSS kit that doesn't have Curry axles underneath. They really specced it to the Currys, but I didn't want to buy new axles again, so we went with the... Uh, we, we stuck with the, the Spicer parts axles and we run the Rebel Off-Road um, Recon Dual um, steer, suspension setup. And what's awesome about this is um, we, we Cerakoted the Kings. Um, the springs are powder coated. Everybody always asks, um, where did you get your springs painted? My springs are not painted, they're powdered. And you know, everybody um, always wants to say, how does powder hold up to all that spring? Um, flex. I don't think we did anything custom. You know, we said we, we want these springs powdered, and they powdered them, and I've never had an issue. They've never chipped, they've never cracked, um, never never done anything crazy. Um, this is a King two and a half um, triple bypass and coilover. Um, the rear is a 14 inch uh, two and a half coilover. The, the fronts are, are uh, 12 inch. Uh, there's your anti rock in the rear. Um, rear track bar is rock crawler. Um, it's, it's just the, the standard rock crawler rear. Um, normally the, the Recon DSS kit comes with a um, with a track bar, but it's really made for the Curry setup and I'm obviously not running that. Um, this is still the same gearing um, as before. It's 538's front, obviously 538's rear. Um, the coolest thing or the thing I like most about these axles is it's a full float design. It is a runs Dodge Ram 3500 brakes. So you can see how much bigger those are than, than your factory JK brakes. It'll stop this thing. On a dime, and the uh, the long arm kit on this is a rock crawler um, X Factor kit. Um, the rock, the rock crawler kit comes with a, a bridge over the back axle um, for the three link setup. Um, personally, I don't I don't like how it looks. It's no it's no issue with function. It's just I don't like how it looks. So I went with the Artec uh, truss in the rear with the Artec three link mount up top. So. Um, we'll get into more of what's going on back here, but these are 14 inch um, Kings you can kind of see you got the coilover hanging out through the back um, And you have the triple bypass in the rear that's kind of right in front of that so kind of hard to see it back there, but um, it's it's a uh, it's a DSS uh, front and rear you got a Double throw down setup, so pretty cool um, what, what else is going on back here? So underneath uh, the, the gas tank I don't know if you can even see it back here is we have uh, the, Art the full Artec skid system, um, and it we had to do some custom stuff with that due to the um, due to the cross member from the rail or from the rock crawler kit. Uh, so again, Tom's four x four and and Tyler up there they figured all that out. Um, you know, my opinion is those are those are some of the best guys in the industry. So um, especially if you're in Chattanooga, you got to look up Tom's and 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 chat with Tyler and, and those guys up there they they know their stuff and you know I've had I've had builders from all over the country look at this thing and you know they're they're just like who did your work because this is amazing and you know obviously the answer is 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 Tom's and it's Tyler so um, talk about bumpers real quick and kind of the the outside armor stuff um, since we're at the rear the rear bumper is a poison spider BFH2 um, the reason I went with that one is it's it's a frame chop it keeps everything real close um, you'll see on this one it doesn't have the, the, the rear tire cut out. Most of, of these bumpers do have the kind of the rear tire cut out that goes right down through here. Um, that was a fun challenge to work out with 42 inch tire um, in the Genrite aluminum tire carrier. Um, you can see that, yes, that's an aluminum tire carrier and yes, it holds a 42 inch tire just fine. Um, what we did to kind of offset that, that issue with the tire is we just simply put a piece of um, steel stock in there to, to raise it up a little bit. So it gets the tire pretty high. Um, it does a real good job of blocking your entire rear window, but hey, we got mirrors, right? So um, all my LED lighting on this thing is um, is Rough Country. And everybody's like, why are you running Rough Country? It's cheap, right? Um, it works, it works great. Uh, this light right here is, is less than a hundred bucks. They got a great warranty. It's plenty bright enough for anything that you could ever want to do. 
Um, if it breaks, I can buy six of those compared to you know what I could get something from one of those bigger, more well-known companies for. Um, and you know I like the look of it. It's it's blacked out. It's real thin. It's real it's real slim. So uh, that's why I went with that. Um, tail lights are from Heiss. Um, headlights are being replaced next week with some stuff from uh, Matt over at High Beam Off Road. Uh, wheels and tires. Tires are uh, pit bulls, rockers, 41 by 41 and a half by 13 and a half. Um, got five of them, obviously. Uh, wheels are trail ready beadlocks, um, 17 by 9 inch. Obviously, eight lugs. I, I elected to go with the center caps on it just to clean them up a little bit. Um, we have power tank monster valves built into those wheels. We'll talk more about those in a little bit. Uh, some other some other cool stuff on the outside. The rockers, all my rockers and my front bumper are from Motobilt. Um, we're, we got some Motobilt fenders coming very soon. We're not quite there yet, but the Motobilt stuff, um, personal opinion, uh, I don't get anything free from anybody, but Motobilt, in my opinion, is some of the best stuff in the industry. So it, it's clean. Um, it, it's well thought out. You know, these slots on the side actually give you um, points to put your high lift jack in. So it, it gives you that place on the side of your Jeep if you ever needed to to lift it. So you can just pop it in here. They're, they're actually milled flat and you can you can get the Jeep up off the ground. Um, again, these fenders that I have on here now, the most common asked question about my Jeep are these. Um, I don't know if it's the look. I don't know what it is. Um, what I like the most about them is they fit flush to the body. They, you know, a lot of fenders, they, they kind of dip into this this little groove here and it kind of that's a good place for stuff to get trapped these kind of fit into that but the crazy thing is they're fiberglass right so um, that's the one thing I've never really liked about them I love the look I don't like the fact that they are actually um, they are actually fiberglass so they are getting replaced soon we are going to go with um, Moto built fenders when they when they um, get ready to release those um, I guess we'll walk around up the front and kind of latches this is, we're getting to kind of the cool stuff now. The hood latches are, are from Drake Off-Road. I actually like everything Drake makes that I've put on here so far. Um, you know, these come all in the, the stainless steel. Um, you can get a, a black knuckle there, um, which I went with just to kind of break up some of that. Uh, if you look at the top of my windshield there, you can see the, the RPM Extreme logo. And um, if you don't know who RPM Extreme is, you probably need to look those guys up too um, because they do the fun stuff. Um, the real fun stuff. So we just got done putting a 525 horsepower uh, LS3 in here. It's got the ASA cam. Um, the coolest thing on, on this is he made it work, John at RPM, he made it work with my S-Bod in the, in the same location with my Genesis dual battery kit in the same lo location. Um, and the motor sits in there just high enough so that it doesn't look like it's sunk in. Um, still plenty of room up top if I ever want to, to actually uh, put a Whipple or some, some other kind of supercharger um, up on top. So, pretty cool. Um, what else we do with this? So, um, it's got, it's a um, Corvette LS3 from GM Performance. Uh, it's got a Corvette um, front assembly drive on it. So, your power steering pump's up here, up top. Um, I believe on the Camaro one, it actually sits down low. Um, could be wrong, but um, I believe that's that's why we had to go with the with the Corvette one. We had to do some work to the to the actual PSC pump um, and and drive to, to make it actually work with that. But it, my steering is really really good now. So um, while we're here, this thing's got like 15 rock lights on it from um, Infinite Off Road. So I got two underneath the hood, and I got one in the grill, and I got several all around the Jeep. Um, most of it just to kind of highlight the suspension and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's got dual core radiator. Um, everything works just like factory. So all my gauges work, no lights on the dash. Um, remote start works fine. Um, all the stuff that you would hope would work, automatic door locks, all that stuff, it all works how it should. So um, we finished that right before Jeep Beach this year. Um, and and it's it's very clean and it, it's, it, it works great. So if you're not familiar with the Genesis off-road dual battery kit, um, I'm running it with two yellow top Optima batteries. Uh, the great thing here is you can wire all your accessories to one battery and your you know your your core Jeep stuff to the other and you know if you're if you leave something on or or you're winching real hard you can actually um, you can actually make sure you don't drain both batteries and you're dead on the side of the road on the side of the trail 
Uh, it's got a little button up there too. It, it, it can actually jump itself off. You know, there's been there's been times where I've left like the headlights on and stuff like that um, accidentally, and I come out in the jeepstead. Well, you hit a button, and for like a minute, it, it allows the, the the whole the whole system to, to actually jump itself off the other battery. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, what else on the on the outside here? So um, front bumper is the Motobilt Crusher. Um, you know, I begged, I, I begged Dan over at Motobilt for about a year to, to make this thing for me, and uh, he finally did, and, you know, it's it's my favorite bumper on the market still. Um, I love that it's the, the front hoop isn't too high. It's, it's not too obnoxious. It sits real tight. It's not a frame chop bumper, so it actually works um, with, with your stock frame up there. Um, um, again, I'm running the Curry Anorak in the rear. Um, my... My, I, w I was running a, a factory sway bar up until a couple months ago, but that factory sway bar, um, it would pull when it was really flexed out, and it, it just wasn't. It, it was, you know, the, it was, it was almost like it was gonna, it was gonna just rip itself out of the frame. So what we want to do is just run the, the anti rock and get this done right, like the rest of this thing is. So in the rear, this is the part that everybody says gets kind of crazy. Um, Crawltech tramp stamp. Um, why Crawltech? And the answer is because I want it. Had a uh, at crawling parade a couple years ago. Um, you can see all of my favorite folks are here on the tailgate. To include uh, Chet Town Jeepers. Um, I'm running the Dominion off road uh, shovel and, and high lift mount up there. You can see it, you can get it on and off with the uh, with the top on. So you can get all that stuff off and on with the top on. Um, MB Fort uh, weight tower speakers. Um, you can see the power tanks back here. Um, these are the these are the towers for Rebel Off Road. Um, basically, what that is is going up through uh, the body and tied into the frame are um, some towers that actually cover and make the inside of this thing still waterproof as the um, when the coil the 14 inch coil towers come in. So a 14 inch coil over if you've never seen it, it's huge. It's it's this long. Um, you know before you put it in and compress it down. But those come up all the way through here, and they're really almost to the top of it. So you can see these two screws here. These are where the uh, infinite off-road rock lights are at. Um, they're actually tied in to kind of shine down on that. Uh, kicker sub. Um, um, dirty dog uh, off-road or dirty dog 4x4. Um, cargo net. And I got it. That's, that's all the way around the rear. I did that because when you're driving down the road, you know, especially when you got luggage or you're, you're on vacation or something, you know, it gives you a way to keep your stuff in here and, and nice and safe. The other thing we changed on this is we added a piece of, of, of steel bar. The the one that comes with it is kind of it's a it's a real thin piece of aluminum and over time if if you know again family kids they'll step on that and do stuff and it'll bend. So what we did is we just cut a piece of stock um, rod, put it in there. It's really, really, really heavy. Kind of hear how that's hitting. Um, kids aren't gonna bend that. So um, it's Terraflex C C B mount. Um, the CB antenna itself came from Amazon, maybe. Don't remember where I got it. It works fine. Um, I never. I keep the CB in my dash. It's just one of the little handheld ones. Plug it in when you need it. Um, start talking about power tank stuff. Um, this power tank drop bra bracket. It actually hooks right onto the uh, the side of the roll bar, and it allows even up to a 15 inch or a 15 pound power tank with these Rebel towers to actually sit in there, and uh, it doesn't get in the way of the seats or anything. So, um, pretty neat. Uh, that's the 15 pound power tank with the, um, with the big, their big new regulator on there. So it's like 400 PSI or, or something ridiculous up there. Um, you know, that, that tank has been used a couple times. Um, around the house, I actually used my, my 10 pound tank that I had before that one that I had hooked to the roll bar. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, all my component speakers have been switched out to kicker. Um, why did we go with Kicker? We went with Kicker because um, it was convenient. It was in stock and it was raining at Jeep Beach, so we decided to get crazy and go ahead and do it. Um, put a backup camera on here, so it ties right into the Alpine um, on the Claymore replica. Let's be clear, um, Claymore mine, which is which is neat. Um, it's full um, three-inch exhaust from the headers back. Um, it's running long tube headers off the LS3 from Cooks. Um, which is which is pretty neat. So um, 
there's there's not too many JKs with with long tube headers on it just because um, it's really hard to fit them around the suspension components. But uh, John at, at RPM and, and the guys at Cooks did some great research and they actually made it work really really well. Um, 